bonjour. Danke Nala. Today I'm taking you to Jublin, which is a, a is it Roman Roman ruins, and there's also an amphitheatre there and a temple, apparently. We've arrived at the museum, musée uh, in Jublin. We're going to go inside and we'll show you what's inside and we expect lots of changes because we haven't been here for a long time. But also outside here there's the ruins of, um, this is the fortress. the fortress. So from here afterwards we'll go and show you a couple more bit, a couple more places. Enjoy! Okay we've got our permission to film. This is the entrance all into the museum or musée. You can already see that it's changed a lot since we were last here. Lot cabinets are much more modern and there's a lot more exhibits by the looks of things. There's a couple of bits you'll see a couple of times because um, we decided to go back and just show them a bit closer up. This, be, this is one of those we've seen them a couple of times. They look, they look like bits of stone, not sure if it's stone, bone, or whether it's just calcified metal. That's showing the uh, areas that people lived in. You'll notice in the reflection in the cabinets as well that one minute you'll see me, the next minute you'll see Duncan. We decided to share the film in a, a little bit. It's the Gallic potteries, that's where they found those. And it's also that, that in Gallic as well. As you see, I'll tell you in a minute it's, uh, about more, a bit more about that. Lots of maps showing them where they found things and about the area. This is those um, bits of metal again. They look like they've been making spears, spears, spears and swords. Ob objects found at the sanctuary of Moulay. Moulay is about well, about 20 minutes from where we are, where we live. Now, these are strange pieces. They were actually they actually called pro proto money, a form of currency. This is a huge, almost like a pestle and mortar that was used to crush quartz seam and then it was melted in those little moulds and then once it was cool it was struck and turned into coins. You see some of the coins there. Another amazing bit of reconstruction. Imagine the excitement of these people when they find these things. Religious cemeteries, that, that was about. More spears. Spears or arrowheads or whatever. Well, that stag apparently is a bronze stag and it was found in Juvigne. Um, and it was in a place of Celtic worship. It was obviously in a sanctuary according to that. And that's a picture of the thermal baths, which we will do a quick video of for you. More, it's a bit of, um, Mosaic. Then 
This was from St. Clement's Church in 1853 in Cron. And it was dedicated to Mars Mulo, a Gallo-Roman god. And that is the god of the sea, or the god of the ocean. It's just all about the dead that were found. As I say, we were amazed at how they'd found and reconstructed some of the glass and the pottery. And look at that blue pot there. They've reconstructed that. It's incredible. Just a bald about talking about the town of Giblan that we're in. As I say, there's so much to read on there, I couldn't read them all for you. Sorry, I'm moving around on my chair. The inscription on that apparently relates to the construction of a bathing establishment. This is more about the temple of Giblan that you'll see in the, more in the, in the, the next video. Look at that head, that tiny little statue. We did try to focus on the English writing on there, but the, the light reflects with the glass and it wasn't always possible. And look at these incredible forms here. I mean, how did they manage to carve those with the tools they had available? Piercings and things, those. Some rings there. Now, this apparently came from the outer wall of the temple, and they used to be painted with birds like this. And there was, um, that one's obviously a pigeon. But you can imagine how colourful it must have been. This is, I think this is part of a chapita, which is the top of a column. And that, that's possibly part of one as well. That is part of an altar from a forum. Now that board now is showing the aerial views of the theatre of Jablan, which again we're going to show you. But obviously we can't show you from that angle, so it's lucky to be able to show you that. How do they carve all those letters out of that? And what does that say? And look at the detail in that beard, and just amazing. Must have took a bit of cleaning up. Now these are four chapitals, as I think that's how you pronounce it, and I've just found out what they are. And they, they've set them up on those columns to show you what the, they would look like on top of the stone columns. I think that's quite clever. This is a model of the temple and how it was back in the day. Look 
These look again like possible off a column or somewhere. Very ornate, because again, you know, how did they manage with the tools they had? I can't read that quick enough to tell you what that says. Another amazing piece of reconstruction. Look at that glass. Incredible. How on earth does it survive? And apparently jewellery and vases were often imported, but local goldsmiths often copied uh, the fashionable pieces and they used to use simple earthenware crucibles to melt the bronze for ornaments and decorations like the ones in this, this uh, display. And this looks like they were, must have been their scales. This here is part of the uh, viaduct that ran under the, um, the fortress, I assume. This is an incredible model they've made of Jublan town itself. See in the back there the fortress, which is what we should we'll be looking at in a minute, and that's the amphitheatre that's just up the road a little bit that we're going to go and film as well. And they had the temple and a smaller version. See on the right there like a photograph of aerial view of the town where they've obviously made this from. It shows you on on here. This is a whole list of things that they used to import. You can see on there it says wine, oil and seasoning, and ceramics. They've come from Italy. And all different types of ceramics, mortars, marble came from all over the place. Some more coins. for something there. That was obviously used for pouring. This is tableware. I mean they used to use um, a spoon and a knife to uh, eat with. And the spoon could be made of bronze or bone, and I assume the metal, uh, the knife, sorry, would be uh, metal. There's some the jewellery again. Not very delicate, very delicate. How did they make that? We've got the tools now to make it that delicate. How did they do it? 
well, they obviously had some tools to do it because they did it. And those beads are just all carved stripes in them. I think I think I'd even be likely to wear that now. That little metal piece there on that stone apparently used to a woman used to use to mix her makeup in, or a doctor would use it to mix his medis medicines. These tiny, tiny little animals. The fish, a couple of fishes. The goat. Yes, I'm assuming that's a goat. That like a little dog, I don't know if it is, or a lion. There's a boar. Not quite sure what that is. All that, but this is all apparently decoration. Decor of daily life. More carving. looking at this reminds me I've made some bird pottery myself I've got a friend who's a very good potter and uh, she taught me I've thrown a, a couple of pots on the wheel and I've actually did, done some hand modeling as well just from slabs of clay really enjoyed it done some pottery painting as well the door the sign on our jeet door I painted that all those coins, I wonder how much that's worth in that in currency now. These apparently are, are pieces from games. Gallo Roma, Roma, Roman games. I don't know what that black thing is, it's a bit strange. Now we're coming up to a a mock-up from pieces they've found of a domestic hearth. They used to cook the meals in a pot like that in a hearth which would have had walls around it as well to keep the heat in. Amazing how they discover these things. That's the other side of the model we just looked at. Now some mosaic they've found. The next piece I'm going to show you, this piece here, was their first discovery in Jubla, and it was discovered in 1776. There we go, first discovery in Jubla. This is me trying to get to grips with the joystick on this computerised um, a mock-up basically of a walk around the inside of the fortress it was quite basic forward and back and side to side but I it took me a while just to get it to go around corners on the map you follow the, the, the red dot and it shows you where you where you are on in the grounds and where you can go I carried on down there and then went into the center of the fortress obviously not really then we got a bit more jewelry Bit more, bit more bling. Early Middle Ages pottery. Now we're about to go out and see the fortress. There it is. More drawings of it, more plans of it. And as you can see there, there's another, yet another model of it. There must have been a lot of people living in there, the amount of towers and things. A lot of army.
view they would have had from the fortress. There's a lot, so much of it there that it's incredible. You know, you could, it's almost easy to see how it actually was back in the day. Lots of mounds of earth, which I think shows that on the model as well. As it must have been part of their defence. to what would have been the entrance into the fortress. This that we're approaching now is um, Le Grand Bain, which is basically the large baths. On the other side of the fortress, there's um, Le Petit Bain, which is the small baths. I don't know who got to use the large bath as opposed to the small baths, but it'd be interesting to know whether it was children used the little ones and the adults used the big baths. I don't know. to know how deep these baths were how they how did the water get in there it's, uh, maybe it was in via that viaduct that we saw and there I'm assuming is where they heated the water up I don't know any of you historians out there know how it was done Le Grand, Grand Bain. Then we're going to walk round the walls. Feel free to fast forward if it's a bit too slow for you. I was trying to walk a bit slower just so as not to make it too bumpy, even though I'm now using my new gimbal, which is supposed to steady things. It amazes me how small the stones are and I just wonder how long it took for them to to build. Obviously you've got the big stones at the bottom, but the rest of it's built from such small stones when you, in comparison to the stones that built our cottage. I mean they're enormous in, you know, in comparison. Obviously, the big stones were their foundation, whereas we now use concrete. I suppose nothing else, it would have been easier to transport the small stones, wouldn't it? Rather than the big, huge stones. That's the small baths in front of us there. I've got a feeling we cut that off a little bit, but um, it's just a small version of the other one. room was. I mean it looks like it could have been somewhere to wash your clothes couldn't it? Like a lavoir. This door was quite small like to duck to get through this one. Duncan was a little bit worried about my footing going across the big stone there. Not natural at the moment. And look how flat those walls are. It's amazing. I 
was thinking it was a shame that we didn't have a map of how they thought the rooms were laid out in the fortress. It would have been easier for me to tell you then what rooms did what, or for, for what reason. This is an interesting bit. It's all been fenced off and put a grid put on for safety. There's no label to say what it is, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a well. If we'd have got the headphones, which we didn't even think about, maybe it would have told us on through the headphones what that was. fence up just saying that it, was, it wasn't safe to go in here. I'm curious why. Maybe there was a bit more crumbly stone in there, I don't know. I wonder if that was the little, a little chapel or something. sort of doorway this was before. Okay, we're going back, back out again through the little doorway. Right, there's the, the petit bar. So that's the small version of the grand ban, obviously. And I don't know, so I don't know who bathed in those ones, but uh, it's a smaller, it's about half the size of the other, the grand ban. Yeah. I wonder what that bit was. The third, that bit there. There you go. There it says, petty bar. Little or small bars, they're saying. They've put that roof over like they have on the other one to protect it. So we're about done now. We're leaving uh, the fortress and we'll see you in the next video. I hope you enjoyed it. Au revoir.